What's up, Cyberhawks? So in today's video, we're going to be going over hackers finding missing people. Now, this is something I've been wanting to, I guess, get into for a minute now. I'm kind of just thinking about it. And we're going to be, I guess, going to go into the journey with you guys. So the first video we're going to be, I guess, going over today is this one. Let me go ahead and bring it up for you guys here. And it's from free think okay looks like they got their, uh, their logo up there but yeah i definitely want to do some more of these videos as well on hackers you know helping people out helping out lost people helping out you know people in probably other regards that i'm sure after watching this video i'll think about but anyways i like to see hackers doing good and i definitely want to see more you know videos talking about that like hacking doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily have to be negative or bad it can be positive it can be good and you can help people out so let's go ahead and start this video out let me try this again all right and yeah let's see our journey on hackers helping out people and hopefully i can learn some of this stuff so that i can also help out people like this so let's get into it what do you what do you think happened i have a father that is missing since 1988 on father's day Ooh. every year hundreds of thousands of people go missing people like natalie's father the police told us the only thing we can do is report him missing. I was so upset. There aren't enough resources for the police to find everyone. So people like Natalie are left to search for their missing people on their own. But now a group called Trace Labs brings together hackers from around the world to use their skills to find real missing people. They've turned it into a game where participants find clues in exchange for points. And it's working to help find them. Okay, so I'm not going to be talking throughout the whole entire thing i'll probably do it maybe after each segment this, this was the intro and the thing that kind of got me very interested in like learning more about is the gamification of things as they were talking about they're giving people like points like, like that person got 150 points for clues so it's kind of like making it even even more fun and making you i guess eager to really grind and try to try to balance quality and quantity at the same time so you're trying to match you know getting the clues of course but trying to do it fast at the same time and i'm pretty sure that you can never become a rush when you're competing with a lot of other people i'm trying to find other people so let's continue this one night my best friend called me and said hey ali did you heard about the trace lab they look for a missing person it, it's hackers I said, what? So I wrote an email to uh, Robert Sells. I said, can you help me? And he said, yes. I think because I'm in search and rescue, I get to see things that most people don't. I get to see all the people that go missing. And as I was paying attention to that, I noticed that there's a lot of people that go missing that, that we never look for. I always wondered who's looking for those people if I'm not. And sometimes, sometimes nobody. The person behind Trace Labs is Rob Sell. He's a tracker for search and rescue and a computer security professional. Trace Labs became really a blending of those two passions. As a tracker, Rob looks for little clues and details that paint a bigger picture about a person's direction of travel, their speed or state of mind. Trace Labs takes the same approach to online searching. Finding little details about a person's online activity can add up and help lead investigators to their current location. We're addressing all those people that go missing that nobody's looking for right now. Rob started Trace Labs as a way to educate people and get them involved in the process of open source intelligence gathering, or OSINT. When you go to a typical conference, a security conference, there's so many different things you can do. You can learn how to hack a car, how to hack a voting machine. Whatever you want to do is there. Yet that effort is wasted in a way because it's not used for anything else. What we do is we take all that effort and we put it into something that's actually going to benefit society. How you doing? Not bad. Rob Sell, nice to meet you, Chris. Rob organizes events like this Capture the Flag game where participants use OSINT techniques to collect data that could be used to help find missing people. So open source intelligence, it's information that you would find online on the subject. As participants gather useful information, they're awarded points towards winning prizes. Even seemingly trivial data can be important in tracking someone down. Okay, so we'll go ahead and stop it on this, I guess, next segment. So OSINT, yeah, open source intelligence, I do like that a lot. When I was looking at TCM Securities courses, their OSINT uh, was one of my favorite courses that I took from them, kind of just getting a plethora of different knowledge on sites that you can use so you can find information on, on people and actually learning more about current sites that 
everybody uses but may not understand how much information you can get from sites. So like, for example, OSINT forum, I'm um, well, LinkedIn, for example, LinkedIn is a great site for OSINT. If you're looking for somebody, like, okay, let's say I wanted to hack a, like, a, like a company, for example, right? I can first start by trying to get their employee information. So I can find their employees, thankfully using good old LinkedIn, for example. And from there, I can get their first name and last name. And then I'm not going to say like the email structure of a, of a company usually is like the first name, last name at whatever company dot com. That's like one of the most basic ones. And then there's like their name, a first name dot or period, their last name at whatever company. Or it can be like maybe the last. Well, maybe like a first, maybe like a first initial, second initial or like a, like, the, like the first four or five words. In the, of your first name and then maybe like the first four or five words of your last name at whatever company name.com so like kind of kind of just using that for example like if i found somebody and their name is like josh peck for example and they work to the company i want to hack and let's say the company i want to hack is towards us so okay i can like i can like say okay josh.peck at towards us.com trying to send that a phishing email and let's say i tried it and that one actually hit and it went to him sent that phishing email to him. Now, let's say he clicked on the phishing email that I wanted him to click on. Now I'm able to access his computer, for example, or maybe he clicked on that phishing email that I sent. And the reason I was able to send that because I was kind of just blindly shooting out emails on LinkedIn. Maybe I have that phishing email that he goes somewhere to change his password. And when he's changing his password, I have him enter his username and you know password there to change it. But actually the information he's putting in i'm able to see so now i got his username and password and now i can do even more damage because now i'm going to get more information know his name know his password maybe i might want to try to get into his account and maybe plagiarize that i'm him i'm trying to give him more information in that way or i may just use his login credentials and try to find other ways that i can get in but all that just from again using linkedin and getting the first and last name from that company that I wanted to hack, you know, hacked, you know, hack into. And again, on LinkedIn, for example, like there's thousands of people, you know, within each company or within like a lot of these big companies. So finding people wouldn't be that hard. Again, another place you can use a good one is Twitter. On Twitter, you can do a lot of good searches that can help you out with like streamlining things. Like on your search on there, like, okay, let's say I wanted to find like this user saying, something about red cars you can like put in put it in the search and i might have maybe like show you guys but you can put it in the search like at that person and then what kind of like keyword you're kind of looking for i believe you need to use the quotation mark so at whoever their username and then the quotation mark like red cars for example and then whatever they said about red cars would just pop up so you wouldn't have to go through hundreds if not thousands of messages, just typing in a little bootleg SQL commands, pretty much allowing you to really get into the meat of what the information that you're actually looking for. And again, like if you want a person to get fired or something, for example, like you could do something along those lines of like maybe bad words or something and find something that they wrote in 2012, you know, it should be a menace out here. So like there's a lot of different things you can do with that. And again, you can do it everywhere even on instagram you can go back on people's information maybe find out where they maybe you don't know where somebody lives but going through their pictures you're able to get an idea maybe you see some trees that may be reminiscent of some type of region maybe they may talk about something on one post or, or tagged in one post maybe five years ago and then that your clue of okay they're in this state now i have a better pinpoint of how i'm able to find this person so yeah OSINT is crazy it's fun it's cool and yeah maybe i can also do like some more maybe more videos on that because i do want to talk about more ways that you can use like hacking or maybe just cyber security tools and knowledge in general to help people out i think that would be another fun one to do but let's go ahead and continue on this but yeah okay one more thing too the gamification of things i liked how they were again talked about that like even little small things you're getting points for so you may not know everything about finding that person, but maybe you have this one or two clues that can then help out somebody else. You're still getting points, so you're still feeling happy. But the other person now, they're getting those two clues and then they may jolt their memory or jolt their thinking process. 
and then they're able to find even something even more juicy or even bigger. So it's like a teamwork effort, but everybody's still getting their individual points. And you're still working as a team in the same sense. Quite often we'll see a person will get put into human trafficking. So we'll look for their picture because usually we can see their tattoo or some sort of sign on their body where we can identify them. Contestants that come in will say, wait a minute, are these real missing people? And you can see their mind change. It's like, wow we're actually changing people's lives. For this event, Rob has brought together numerous hackers and security professionals, all working to find whatever data they can about these missing people. We collect information on those missing persons and then give that to law enforcement to help them to locate those missing persons. Natalie's father is listed among several other missing people the contestants are looking for. He's been missing for over 30 years. So those are gonna to be tough and you may get very little information on them at the end of the day, but I think any little bit that we get that we can submit to law enforcement could help. So when you think of your digital footprint being out there, there's a concern there sometimes, but in this case, we're using it to actually locate those people. So the more we have of you digitally, the, the better off we are in some ways, right? People are actually helping out yeah. while they're having fun, right? Yeah. Although it's a serious issue, but it's a great initiative. Yeah. In the years since Rob started Trace Labs, they've provided law enforcement with data on dozens of cases, even information about the current whereabouts of people. What these people here are doing today is really helping law enforcement to locate those people. And that's something the families can really appreciate. After two days, the team finds no new information on Natalie's father. But groups like Trace Labs mean you don't have to search on your own. He's still listed, and contestants are still looking for any data they can find. Sharing that burden for even a day or two can make all the difference in the world. We've gamified something very serious, which on the face of it doesn't sound good, but it was the only way for us to achieve our objective of crowdsourcing hundreds of people and bringing them in for that focused effort to locate that child or, or elderly person or whoever it might be. Anywhere I can push that envelope and allow us to do better, I feel pretty good about that. So hopefully this inspires people to, to do that. Just to know that Trace Lab, stranger, they would uh, do research for my, my father. I was touched. I don't think I'm gonna stop looking for him. I will never stop. Mm, okay. Thanks for watching. Oh, wow. I didn't mean to go to the next one. Hacking satellites with $300 worth of TV gear. But yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Let me see if I can go back right there. And when he was talking about inside, I guess, like their class or whatever, and they're letting people know that they're actually looking for real people, it kind of reminded me of Ender's game a little bit. Because, like, on that one, at the end, at least, they didn't know that they were actually, if I'm not mistaken, attacking the aliens. Like they, like they thought they were in some type of what simulation again. But the final test was them actually attacking whatever alien group or whatever they were against. So they were actually against real people. But again, they didn't know until I think at the end. These people, they might not know it right at the beginning, but they are knowing before the end, of course. So, yeah, you know, that, that could be something too. maybe I wonder how fast or how efficient they would get the information if they didn't know, if they thought all these people were just fake and they just kind of just find the information. I wonder, would it be any big difference? I think there probably would be. I think actually telling the people probably is better because I feel like now you have some type of compassion on, on really trying to get this and maybe working multiple days versus if you think it kind of just fake, you may still have some like passion for it, but maybe not the compassion to keep on going hard day after day or week after week on maybe some of these searches but i'm also intrigued too on some of these like are these like are these primarily people who have just like ran away or like are still living i know they did say something about some people may you know maybe being trafficked and whatnot but i'm like again it is something i want to like learn more about but like are these people who are getting trafficked are they like still getting their pictures taken like everywhere I'm definitely intrigued to see more or are they like more or less looking maybe to see if they can find where their bodies are located but if they have passed i'm definitely intrigued to learn more about that and maybe you guys maybe might know more so definitely let me know in the comments on this like the girl are looking for her father for 30 years like did he just like this up like did he just go somewhere and then and there's like they're trying to find that location or just trying to find maybe what happened to him and then find his body so yeah if you guys know in the comments definitely let me know Kind of what they're looking for on that and uh, yeah i like that video a lot trace labs man look into that some more as well and yeah again that would be cool if i could do an interview with him that would be awesome kind of get his insight 
what made him really like what was the like what was the jolt in his head and at what age when he was like okay i gotta do this when i get older or i gotta do this right now definitely intrigued to hear that and yeah guys if you haven't if you haven't already be sure to hit that like button and subscribe